Professor Thompson, and I'm just going to do some extra examples uh, from Section 2.2. So this is not a lecture. You can find that in the lecture playlist. This is just going to be some extra examples. So uh, I want to start with problems in the book 4 through 11. And what these are, are they have a graph in the book of a function, and they want you to sketch the derivative based off that. You, and there's a method that they use, which I'll explain here. So I will try to just recreate these graphs and then sketch. So let me put some axes here in the middle. And what I'll do is I'll sketch them on the same coordinate plane. So <coughs> We'll start with number four. Number four looks like this. So it's supposed to connect there in the middle, but that's the general picture. And the way that you should start is try to figure out where does this graph have a vertical or a horizontal, excuse me, a horizontal tangent line. And that's, for example, right here. If those are actually connected to the same spot like they should, then the tangent line there is horizontal. And that means that the slope there is zero. So I can go ahead and figure out right here that my derivative should be zero at zero. So right there. I know that uh, the derivative is zero there. I also know the same thing right here at these two spots. So the reason why is because every time I have a horizontal tangent line and that's because the slopes are going from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. And just like the intermediate value theorem says, when you change from a negative number to a positive number, you cross zero. So this function starts off with a decreasing slope as I go left to right, so that's going to be negative values. But then between the first two red dots, the function is increasing, right? So the function's derivative should go up and then come down. And it comes down when it starts to slow down. So the function has a steep positive slope and then it starts going less steep again. So this hump in the red should correspond to when my slopes start to stay positive but they start to decrease again. Then over here on the right of zero, I have negative slopes that then come back to zero. And it's the same idea. It's a very negative slope and then uh, starts to become less negative again. And after that, the slopes are positive forever, and they keep going up. And on the far left, the slopes are negative forever. And if I go to the left, like I'm going right to left instead of left to right, the slopes are getting more and more negative. So that's what the graph should look like, give or take. So the black is f, and the red is f prime. Okay, so that's number four. And I guess I'll just actually erase it to so that I can use the same axes again. And now for number let's see, let's do number seven here. Seven is just a semicircle. So it has a specific domain and it stops after a while. <laughs> and what's going to happen here is that, well, we see that the horizontal tangent line happens right around x being 0. So I'm having trouble getting that right on there, but you can see right there what I mean. And if that tangent line is horizontal, that means the derivative should be zero there. And basically, the derivative, 
Well, it's going to start with positive slopes that are decreasing the zero, and then you've got negative slopes that are, uh, they just keep getting more and more negative, right? So, derivative should look something like this. So now let's look at uh, 9 and 11, but before I do that, I just want to point out that the red line, I should not draw arrows or try to keep it going. You should kind of keep in mind that the derivatives stop here because the function's domain, the derivative's domain isn't going to be any bigger than that. The derivative might have a smaller domain, but it's not going to extend past where the function did. So it needs to stop there. Alright, so now let's redraw. And we'll do number 9 here. So 9, the original function, looks like this. Imagine that these are straight. <coughs> and this one's a little trickier. So, to be more in line with what they have, let me make these edges not quite as steep. So basically in the middle, it kind of looks like you have the same slope twice. Then on the edges, maybe you have a slightly uh, not a steep slope. So let's just look, before we look at the points where I switch from one straight piece to another, let's just look kind of at them individually. So let's look around zero, and to the right, I have a negative slope, maybe about negative one. So I'm talking about right between there. That leg, I kind of make a right triangle there, is about a negative one slope. On the left side, I have about a positive one slope. So maybe my square should be a bit farther. So we'll say that's minus one, and we'll say that's one. And then, maybe then I have about a slope of a half, but not only is it a half, if I go to the far right, so over here, it's not only a half, but it's a positive one half. So it should be about like this. And then the far left is about negative one half. So the derivative graph is this weird graph, just the red bouncing up and down. And that's because these straight lines have their specific slopes and then I just jump from one slope to another. So this function is not differentiable at these sharp edges. So at these points here the function is not differentiable anymore because the slopes from the left and the slopes from the right are different so the limit of the slopes doesn't exist. And that's number 9. So now let's look at number 11. And this graph looks like a pretty simple, smooth graph. Like this. Except, let me draw it a bit more carefully here. So it's this nice, smooth graph, this kind of snake shape. Except that, around zero, just for a second, it's got a vertical tangent line right here. So imagine that I drew a bit more carefully and it doesn't have more than one value at zero but it does have this vertical slope just for a second. Remember the slope of a vertical line is undefined so that's not good for us. That means that the derivative won't work there. So for the derivative regardless of the fact that the function's negative or positive and the y values, the slope is always going up, right? So I start with a pretty uh, positive slope and my slopes keep going up, but I don't uh, have a slope there where I have the vertical tangent line. And then on the right, I have positive slopes that are becoming less positive. So I have a shape like this. So I don't really need uh, 
the arrows there. But the slope goes up, but then it's not defined at zero, and then it comes down because a vertical tangent line makes it impossible to define your slope.